Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School. It is Hiller's playoff softball as we are underway. Heather Hawley on the mound as the Hillers welcome in Dartmouth. Dartmouth 13 and 8. They won in the preliminary round to advance here to Hopkinton High School as Hawley delivers a bunt up the first base side and foul it goes. 0 oh and 2. The Hillers are the third seed in the bracket and they have had a tremendous season. We'll take a look at the diamond right now. Heather Hawley on the mound. Jillian Cedia behind home plate. Lindsey Whittles at first base. Emily Whalen at second base. Molly Bennett at shortstop. Emma Murphy at third. As that one is just outside. From left to right, Katie Hawley, Lily Morningstar, and Julia Di Benedetto. As Rachel Pereira, the center fielder, up at the plate, facing a two and one count. Holly delivers that one inside, bunt pulled back, three and one. Let's take a look at the Dartmouth lineup. Rachel Pereira leading things off in center field. Haley Kamire, the shortstop, batting second. Jenna Rainville, the catcher, batting third. Hannah Aruda, the third baseman, batting fourth. And Pereira draws the walk there. Kaylee Alfonso, the second baseman, batting fifth. Lindsay Oliveira, the, sh the first baseman, batting sixth. Sarah Giosa, the center fielder, batting seventh. Ariana Medeiros, the right fielder batting eighth, and Sophia Souza, the pitcher, rounding out the batting order as there's a bunt up the third base side, foul. Dartmouth is led by head coach Beth Orguin, assisted by Ashley Leal, Nicole Pine, and Sarah Zelensky. Hopkinton Hillers led by head coach Scott Soderberg, assisted by Mitch Mortali and Shannon Albury. Line up and the pitch, the bunt fouled away. That is now two strikes on Kamire. And it is a nice afternoon, a little bit cloudy, but the rain for now holding off as this is hit in the air, a little pop up and a big collision as well and collides with the base runner trying to get to the ball and ends up getting knocked down and she appears to be okay, thankfully. And Pereira is going to runners interference. be called out for runner's interference. So that is one away. So one away, runner on first. And they're going to check on Emily Whalen, make sure she's OK. Coach Soderberg out there. Jenna Rainville, the catcher, will come up to the plate next for Dartmouth. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Bob Hamilton on camera to bring you Hiller's playoff softball on H-Cam. And she is letting the coach know that she's okay and ready to play. Line up and the pitch, upstairs. Set to deliver. Hit in the air to left center and arranging over to make the catch is Lily Morningstar two away. Kamire stays at first base. I'll bring up H Hannah Aruda, the third baseman. There's a, a foul ball. Oh, and one. Set to deliver. There's a strike. Oh, and two. Line up and the pitch. There's strike three, and that'll wrap up the top half of the first. No runs scored for Dartmouth. To the bottom of the inning we go. It's Hiller softball on HCAM. Bottom of the first inning, the Hillers coming to the plate. Starting things off is Emily Whalen, the second baseman. Batting second, the left fielder, Katie Holly. Third, the shortstop, Molly Bennett. The catcher, Heather Holly, will bat fourth. Lindsey Whittles, the first baseman, batting fifth. Emma Murphy, the third baseman, batting six. 
Julia DiBenedetto, the right fielder, batting seventh. As she'll go for the the walk there, but not swing, 1-0. Julian Cedia, the catcher, batting eighth. Lily Morningstar, the center fielder, rounding out the batting order for the Hillers. Hit in the air, foul territory to the stands, 1-1. One one. For those who are wondering what happened on that play between first and second, where Emily got trucked by the runner, the a fielder has the right to the baseball. The runner must avoid. So she was this called is popped out. up and caught. All right, so a runner's interference in that situation. And that was a hard collision that uh, Whalen took, but she's certainly uh, a tough, tough cookie. As Katie Holly will step in. Katie's got wheels and speed to burn. Fouled away into the woods, 0 and 1. Have you seen a lefty yet this year in the broadcast booth? Uh, there's been a few lefties. As this is hit in the air over to center field to the fence, and that is off the fence. That is going to be a base hit for Holly, a stand-up double. She crushed that ball. That was nearly gone. And that is a nice way to start things off for the Hillers offense as Molly Bennett will step in. A South Division I bracket matchup. The Hillers and Dartmouth as that bunt is going to be ball one as she pulls it back. The winner of this game will advance to take on the winner of Braintree and their opponent, they'll either play Somerset and Attleboro. That game's going on right now. As this is up the middle, slow roller, throw to first. It is going to be not in time. Everybody's safe. Molly Bennett showing off the wheels, beats it out. Katie Holly pushes up to third. Runners on the corners, one out. Heather Holly to the plate. A lot of room between second and short, so I'm wondering whether Molly will take off. And strike one. Hillers 18 and two on the season. Their only losses was against Milford and Norton. And they are the third seed in this Division One bracket. A swinging strike there. Milford, the second seed at 19 and one. Silver Lake, first seed at 22 and 0. That's always a great softball program over there. Wind up in the pitch. Just outside, runner from first taking off, and Molly Bennett showing off the wheels once again with a stolen base. Let's Two take a look women at, in scoring position. Let's take a look at the Dartmouth Diamond. Sophia Souza, the pitcher. Jenna Rainville, the catcher. Lindsay Oliveira, the first baseman. Wind up and the pitch, that is fouled away. Over at second base, it is Kaylee Alfonso. The shortstop, Haley Kamire. The third baseman, Hannah Arruda from left to right. Sarah Giosa, Rachel Pereira, and Ariana Medeiros. One and two is the count. That's fouled away. It was nice to see Miss Hawley and Miss Bennett graduate last night. Up the first base side, foul. Siller Sitters making good contact early on. A full house here on this Saturday afternoon for Hiller's playoff softball. Great turnout from both sides. That one just outside, two and two. Line up and the pitch, swinging strike, and Holly goes down, two away. Lindsay Whittles will step in. Two 
two outs, the runners will be running on contact. They don't have to think about anything. Whittles batting a 232 on the season. She'll take strike one. Line up and the pitch, fouled away. It was nice to see Lindsay graduate last night, get her diploma. Nice to see her in her cap and mortarboard. Set to deliver. Breaking ball, that did not break quite like she wanted it. Two and two. Fouled away. Hit in the air, over the head of the second baseman. That'll drop one run in, and a second run is in. Two nothing, Hillers, a two RBI single for Lindsey Whittles. That was uh, easy for Molly Bennett to score because, again, there were two out and she went on contact. Emma Murphy steps in. That is just what the Hillers needed there. Nice piece of hitting right over the head of Kaylee Alfonso. That one's fouled away. is low. Nice job by the catcher, keep it in front of her self. Up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, and that, <laughs> I thought it was coming over here, but it was a good throw. The first baseman pulls it down, and that'll wrap up the inning. Hillers score two runs, two nothing as we head to the second. Top of the second inning, Dartmouth coming up to the plate. Kaylee Alfonso, the second baseman to start things off. Due up also is Lindsay Oliveira, the first baseman, and Sarah Giosa, the center fielder. Heather Hawley on the mound for the Hillers. And she's had a great season on the mound. As that one is just outside. One and oh. Set to deliver. Hit in the air, a high fly ball, third base side foul. Landed just outside no man's land, so they'll be able to retrieve that ball. Keep the cost down here for the TVL. Holly's set to deal. Check swing, and did she hold? And yes, she did, two and one. Heather Holly, a 148 ERA on the mound, 12 wins, two losses. That one's fouled away over towards the Dartmouth bench area. Holly has 123 strikeouts to her credit. And she has done a great job throughout this season. That is hit in the air left side and foul out of the reach of Katie Holly. Well, the wind had no effect on that ball. There is no wind, Tom. Yeah, a little bit here and there. She deals upstairs. Right up in the pitch, that is fouled away. That might be a keeper for the squirrels and the foxes. A 
Molly deals up the third base side, foul. Pretty good battle here between Alfonso and Holly. It is a full count. Fouled away, third base side once again. Is Alfonso's strategy to wear out the fielders so they can't get to a ball? Maybe. Hit in the air, right center, and that is going to get just past the reach of Emily Whalen. That's a single. Lindsay Oliveira, the first baseman, will come up, and she's going to push up to second on a misfire on the throw in from the outfield. So an error will allow Alfonso to advance. Runner on second, no outs. Lindsay Oliveira steps in. The bunt and it hit fair ball. That is going to be a single note. They'll call it foul now. Oh, no, calling her out. Oh, they're calling her out. His box. Okay, ball hit the batter. And that is going to mean an out. One away. Sarah Giosa, the center fielder, steps in. There's a strike. I'll score that one unassisted until I get a ruling on it. Yeah, I haven't seen that before. That's a first. This, that is hit in the air, foul. 0-2. Coach Steve Simos is down here from the boys varsity team along with a number of players supporting the girls team. That one just outside. And a lot of times we'll see the softball team after their game will go up watch the baseball team but the baseball team doesn't really get an opportunity because of course their games are longer and they play at the same time usually. That is hit in the air over to left center. And Lily Morningstar will track it down for the second out. Two way, and Ariana Merderos, the right fielder, will step in. Holly deals. There's a strike. Fouled away, 0-2. Oh if Heather can retire Medeiros, she'll have the nine, one, and two batters up next inning. That one is just low. Jillian Cedia trying to steal that strike from the uh, umpire, but he didn't give. Hit in the air over to the left side, and it is in foul territory, but a nice catch over in left field, and that will wrap up the inning. As Katie Holly able to track that one down, we will head to the bottom of the second. The Hillers leading two to nothing. Bottom of the second inning, seven, eight, and nine do up for the Hillers. Julia D. Benedetto, Julian Cedia, and Lily Morningstar face Sophia Sousa, who delivers ball one. Just slow there, 2-0. Julia showing her patience at the plate, just a freshman. She deals. Up the middle, glove by the pitcher. Throw over to first, not a problem. One to three goes Di Benedetto. Julian Cedi will step in, the catcher. She's done a great job behind the plate this season. 
And at the plate, the freshman is batting a 390. She has driven in 14 and scored three. Also has six doubles and three triples to her credit. She'll take some time to tie up her cleat there. Rid herself of some jewelry. Yeah. That one outside. For somebody with so much power, it's surprising she's up in the front of the box. Thought she'd be a little bit deeper to give herself some extra time. The HCAM Weather Center reading at 69 degrees today as that one's fouled away, one and one. Is low two and one she will be a standout catcher in the TVL next year that's my prediction up the right side glove by the second baseman throw to first not a problem four to three goes Cedia two away Willie Morningstar to step in There's a strike. 0 oh and 1. Souza deals. Fouled away. 0 oh and 2. Wind up and the pitch, up the middle, right back to the pitcher, throw to first, not a problem. The Hillers go down one, two, three, but lead two to nothing as we head to the third inning on HCAM. Top of the third inning, Dartmouth coming back up to the plate, nine, one, and two do up. Two nothing lead for the Hillers as the wind's starting to pick up a little bit. There is some storm activity around the local area. Hopefully it'll miss us. Rain has certainly been an issue this season for everyone, as there's a strike 0 and 1. Heather going after her opposite number. The lefty awaits the pitch, the bunt fouled away, 0 and 2. Set to deliver, fouled away, count remains 0 and 2. Infielders move back with two strikes now. They don't believe she's going to bunt with two strikes. I agree. Wind up in the pitch, fouled away, good battle here. Up the middle, glove by Willen, throw to first, not a problem. Four to three there for Souza, one away. Rachel Pereira will come up to the plate. She was the uh, young lady that crashed into uh, Emily Whalen after she had walked in the first inning. And I don't think there was any intention there. It was just a situation where the base runner just could not avoid running into the infielder. Well, two, two trains on the same track, one little train and one big train. Yep, but of course the infielder will always get the benefit of the doubt in those situations, as you mentioned earlier. I went upstairs. Swinging strike, one and two.
And this is a rocket right up the middle. That'll drop into center field. A one-out single for the leadoff hitter, Rachel Pereira. We'll bring up Haley Kamire, the shortstop. Hit in the air to the left side, and that is gloved by Holly. Runner will stay put at first. Two way. Jenna Rainville, the catcher, to step in. Just outside. Wind up in the pitch. There is a strike, one and one. Up the middle, and it is gloved by the shortstop, and the throw to first is in time. And fortunately, they didn't need the double play there, but she could have just stepped on second and got the fourth out, but threw to first instead. But in uh, any uh, how, they got the job done, and that's all that matters, Larry. I thought she dragged her foot along the bag with the ball, and then I thought she threw a little bit high and Whittles was able to come down that bag, but I think the runner may have beat her. All but right. Yep, well, they, they got the call. They got the call. That's all that matters. Bottom of the third, coming up next on HCAM. Bottom of the third inning, top of the order for the Hillers. Emily Whalen, Katie Holly, Molly Bennett do up. A 2 nothing lead for Hopkinton. But it has turned into... Kind of a pitcher's duel the last couple of innings. See if the Hillers can get the offense going once again as they did in the first. Bunt here, slow roller up the middle, the throw to first, and they got her just in time. Whalen na nearly beat it out. I believe that was the third baseman if I'm not mistaken. That came all the way up the line to get to that ball. That's what I have in my book. We'll go with that, that one of us could be wrong, but both of us can't, right, Larry? As Absolutely, boss. As Katie Holly steps in, and she'll take ball one. She will be vying for the shortstop position along with Emma Murphy next year, I believe. That one upstairs. Yeah, this Hiller's team will have certainly a lot of returning talent next year. Get in the air, foul. Katie's blessed with track star speed. So anything hit on the ground, she's got a chance being a left-hander to beat it out. Sousa deals up the middle, and that is off the glove of Sousa. Glove by the shortstop, and there's no play. And speak of the speed you were mentioning, she'll beat that one out. An infield single for Holly. No error there whatsoever. That's a base hit all the way. Oh, yeah. That, that was uh, a tough ball to field, and that was not a routine play the pitcher tried to make as Molly Bennett steps in. Again, uh, the Dartmouth uh, infield is given... And she will get a piece of this one. Glove by the second baseman. Throw to second. They get one. So a force out. Fielder's choice. Two away. Heather Holly to step in with a runner on first. Fouled away. 0-1. That is hit in the air, foul. 
Molly Bennett was on the on the road down to second base. With Heather Hawley at the plate. Wide up and the pitch. Breaking pitch fouled away. I don't know whether that was a change up or whether she hit her hip and it humped up to the plate. It's a legitimate question. The 0-2 pitch. Lined and that went right off the base runner. Oh, talk about rough luck. And that is going to be an out. We've seen it all today. That is unbelievable. That is the first time I've seen that one. But that will wrap it up for the third inning. To the top of the fourth we go, and hopefully Molly Bennett's okay. Top of the fourth inning, a 2-0 Hillers lead. And the bottom of the third ending in craziness as Heather Holly hit a liner, but it went off the base runner Molly Bennett. What do you score that? Some people uh, were being told, I think, by a couple people that you scored a single and the runner's out. And I'll score four unassisted. I just uh, put Indian rubber. <laughs> Seeing everything today, as we should in a playoff game. Absolutely. That's fouled away. Especially these uh, one-loss elimination games. You just never know what is going to happen. The girls have taken the position not to use the bench for the second time we've been down broadcasting. It's not 90 degrees, so they don't need a tent. This is hit in the air, popped up. Holly calls everyone off, and she will make the catch. And Aruda goes down via pop-up to the pitcher, and that'll bring up Kaylee Alfonso. Pitchers usually run away from pop-ups, and they'll let their uh, corner infields take it. But not in this case. Heather one called it all the way. This is lined in the left field, but a nice job in left field by Holly tracking that one down. Showing off the wheels out there. She had to cover a lot of ground to get to that one. Two away, and Lindsay Oliveira to the plate. There's a strike. And we've noticed a couple of defensive shifts for the Hillers since the last game we've done. And that one is upstairs, one and one. We got Whittles over at first base. That's pretty new to us. Katie Holly over and left. E. Benedetto, the right fielder. Molly Bennett at short. Line past the reach of Molly Bennett into left, and that's a single. A two out single for the first baseman, Lindsay Oliveira. And that'll bring up Sarah Chiosa, the center fielder. Nice to have uh, Lily Morningstar out the center, patrolling her usual spot. I think that's part of the reason for the shifts. Right, and she missed a lot of time after that Milford game. She had a collision with the fence and was out for a good amount of time. I think more than half the season. Because that is fouled away left side, and that'll make the count 0-1. Just past the reach of the three hillers that were in the area. That one is fouled away, 0-2. Wind up in the pitch. And this is right to the shortstop, no problem. And that'll wrap up the top of the fourth to the bottom of the inning we go. 2-0 Hillers on HCAM. Bottom of the fourth inning, five, six, and seven do up for the Hillers. Lindsey Whittles, Emma Murphy, and Julia DiBenedetto. This game has turned into a bit of a pitching matchup between Sophia Sousa and Heather Hawley as that one is in there for strike one. Two runs is not an insurmountable lead. Especially if you're a team that made the playoffs, they probably came back from adversary several 
adversity several times this year. There's a change up again. I went upstairs, one and one. Uh, absolutely not, and both of these teams have good hitters as well. Hit in the air, a high fly ball to shallow center, and it's caught, handled by Rachel Pereira, one away. Emma Murphy to step in. Hit in the air, a high fly ball to shallow right field this time, and that one handled by the right fielder, Ariana Medeiros, for out number two. Julia Di Benedetto will step in. She's hitting over 300 this year, I think. Not bad for a freshman. We'll get you the confirmation on that in a couple seconds. 453 for D. Benedetto on the season as she takes ball one there. That'll keep her on the field, I think. The freshman has played in all 20 games. She has scored nine runs, driven in 16. That one upstairs, 2-0. and Certainly an impressive batting average. That is second on the team, or excuse me, third on the team. Is, or actually second because Morningstar hasn't played enough games to really qualify. She's only played in seven. But Morningstar in seven games, a 467. And then you got Katie Holly, a sophomore, 484. Holly has played in all 20 games as well. And the beauty for Coach Soderberg is she will be towing the rubber, replacing Heather Holly next year. And a breaking pitch there, sailing by for strike number two on Di Benedetto. That was some good movement on that one. Sousa delivers, upstairs, full count. Very impressive crowd here today, Tom. Yeah, it's packed. A lot of Dartmouth fans over by their bench area. Bunch of Hillers fans along the outfield fence and in the stands behind us. Up the right side, bobbled by the second baseman, but she's able to get a good hold on it and get it over to first for the out. One, two, three, go the Hillers. In the bottom of the fourth, to the top of the fifth we go, 2-0 Hopkinton. Top of the fifth inning, due up for Dartmouth, 8-9-1, and one, Ariana Medeiros, Sophia Sousa, and Rachel Pereira. Holly Deals. That one is in there for ball one, just high, the bunt pulled back. Holly deals, another bunt, slow roller up the middle, glove by the first baseman. Nice job by Whalen covering the bag, and they get one. Four to six. Or excuse me, three to six, and that'll bring up Sousa to the plate, the pitcher. And three to four, you're right. <laughs> three to four, that was. Be a long run for the shortstop. <laughs> oh, yes, it would have been. There's a strike. Nice job by Jillian pulling that ball in. 0 and 2 on the pitcher. And she'll get a piece of this one up the middle. Glove by the shortstop. Nice throw to first. Two away. 6 to 3 goes Sousa. Rachel Pereira to step in. That was a nice play there on the run. Right. A good scoop by Whittles at first as well. Pereira having a good day at the plate. She's walked and singled and will take a strike there on the bunt attempt. is in there for a strike. One and one the count. Hey, 
Holly deals. And she get, crushes this one over to left center. That is going to go off the fence after taking a hop on the grass. And that is going to be a double for Pereira. Good piece of hitting there. Tattoo that ball, and that'll bring up Haley Kammeyer. And I think we know the hitter on the Dartmouth lineup you really want to stay away from. It's that leadoff hitter, Rachel Pereira. There's a strike. Two outs, runner on second. Holly Deals, fouled away, 0-2. Just outside. One and two on the shortstop. He's 0 for 2 so far this afternoon. Up the middle, glove by Holly, and she'll flip it over to first to get the out. One to three goes Cam Meyer, and that will wrap up the top half of the fifth inning. To the bottom of the inning we go. The Hillers leading 2 0. 8, 9, and 1 due up for the Hillers. Julian Cedi the catcher, Lily Morningstar the center fielder, and Emily Whalen the second baseman. Hopkinton would love a few insurance runs onto their 2 0 lead. And Dartmouth can't take the number eight hitter for granted, that given pitch. her 4 450 plus average. That pitch upstairs, 1 0. Cedia takes that one low, 2-0. 390 coming into this game on the season. She's played in 19 games this season. And the freshman will be behind the plate, I think, for quite a while for this softball team. As this is up the middle, gloved by the pitcher. Throw to first, no problem. One to three, and that'll bring up Morningstar. That one low, 1-0. One oh. Hopkinton would love to get some assurance this this inning after Lillian comes to top of the order. Check swing, but it's a strike, 1-1. One and one. Up the left side into left field. That's a base hit for Morningstar. A single. One out and a runner on first for Emily Whalen. That's the way to start off a rally. Coach Soderberg going to have a little conversation with Emily Whalen, maybe to show bunt and see if Lillian can grab second or swipe second. Well, with her speed, a bunt is certainly not out of the realm of possibilities. She just may show it. Let's see what the infielders do. See how those infielders rotate. Whalen batting a 424 on the season has played in 19 of the 20 games. There's strike one on the bunt attempt. Runner steals from first, and she is going to be just safe at second. A stolen base for Morningstar. And there is what Coach Soderberg, I think, was talking to. And Whalen that's what about. I predicted. You so did. extra in my paycheck this week. We'll add another zero to the end of it. Whalen has scored 24 runs, driven in 18. Six doubles and three triples to her credit. And she is going to get a piece of this one over to the right side and foul out of the reach of the right fielder, Maderos. 0-2. Just a little out in front of that. Oh, 
She deals. Up the first base side, gloved by the first baseman, steps on the bag for one, and that's all she'll get. Morningstar does push up to third, but there's two outs. Three unassisted on the out. Katie Holly to the plate. Holly having a good day in the batter's box. Two for two, a double and a single, also scored a run in the first. Up the middle, gloved at short, throw to first, not a problem. Six to three goes Holly, and that'll wrap up the fifth inning to the top of the six we go. Dartmouth down to their final six outs on H can. Top half of the sixth inning, three, four, and five for Dartmouth. A swing strike there on the catcher, Jenna Rainville. She flew out to center field and grounded out to shortstop her first two times up. And that is going to be count one and one. Good eye there. Two and one. Heather would love to get through the meat of the order here. They're not hitting three, four, and five for nothing. That is fouled away. Two and two. It's been a good pitcher's duel this afternoon, but Dartmouth running out of time. They need to get a rally going and do it fast. That one's fouled away. Count remains two and two. I'm not jinxing, but should Hopkinton win this game, they'd be the high seed and host another? Mm -hmm. Yep, they will certainly get another home game if they win here today, but this one is gonna drop into left field. It is a leadoff single for Rainville. And we'll bring up Hannah Arruda, the third baseman, with the tying run now at the plate. Now will the number four hitter show bunt and have the th number three hitter uh, take off? We no. We'll see as this is hit in the air over to right field and it is gloved by Di Benedetto. The runner will stay put at first, one away. Kaylee Alfonso, the second baseman, a step in. Alfonso is one for two. Swing strike. She deals up the middle, past the reach of the third baseman. Two on, one out, a single there. Rainville up to second. Alfonso over at first. Lindsay Oliveira, the first baseman to the plate. Will they try and bring the corners in with showing bunt? Trying to uh, coax Emma Murphy up the line. Holly deals. In there for a strike. CD is showing her strong hands. She just brought that pitch in. It was borderline. Swing strike, going two. Oliveira was way out in front of that pitch. And there is ball one. Both runners back to the bags. CD was asking the umpire where that pitch was. She deals. Hit in the air over to left field and it is caught by Holly. And she had a good throw back to second base as well to try to get the runner off the bag. Two away, two on. Sarah Giosa, the center fielder, to the plate. Hopkinton must be playing 
doubles, no doubles, because Julia De Benedetto is playing almost right on the chalk, and Lillian Morningstar is playing straight away in center. So there's a big gap for Gio and Nina. I botched that, sorry, young lady. The 0-1 pitch. Up the middle, glove by the pitcher, flip to first, not a problem. And they get out of the bit of a jam there with no harm done. To the bottom of the six we go, 2 nothing Hopkinton on H cam. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Hillers going to try to add some insurance runs. Molly Bennett to start things off, three, four, and five. Bennett, Holly, and Whittles. And Larry, I understand that uh, you had some news about the TVL awards that were recently given I out. do. Uh, three of the uh, Hopkins Varsity boys uh, got awards. We'll tell you about them in just a moment. And there's ball one. Alex Reynolds, the catcher, was named Tri-Valley League MVP. Quite an honor. Certainly well-deserved as well. And that one's followed away. And with so many great ball players in the TVL, that is not an easy award to accomplish. And Ben McKenzie, who you've seen track down every fly ball this season out in center, occasionally at short, made first team all-star. That's followed away. Very impressive. And, we hope and young Stevie Simos got an honorable mention for getting hit by pitches more often than anyone in the TVL. Wow. He's come a long way, too, hitting-wise this season. As that's on the ground left side, throw to first. They got her. Five to three goes Bennett, and that'll bring up Hawley. Heather Hawley, 0 for two. That one's fouled away towards us, 0 and 1. Heather would love to get her opposite number here and, and get a base hit, probably licking her chops right now. One and one. She is a competitor. Yeah, I'll be curious to see uh, which of these softball players get some awards. I'm sure there'll be a few. Lined up the first base side, and that is foul. Took a hit the red bag. Right, took a bounce off the first base bag. So the red bag is considered foul territory, and it's the runner's base, and the white bag is in play. Holly, a 299 batting average coming into this game. She's played in 19 games as that one's fouled away. She has scored six runs and driven in 29. RBI machine. And also has four home runs to her credit. Some good power there at the plate for Heather Holly. That one upstairs. Two and two is the count. And gets a good piece of this one, a right field, and it's over the reach of Ariana Medeiros. And Holly's going to keep going to second base, and it's a stand-up double. Wow, that ball was scalded. The right fielder had to twirl around. And there's the power I was talking about. That was smoked. Absolutely. They're going to pinch run. Whittles will step in. We'll have a pinch runner for the Hillers as well. Coming in is Hallie Keefe, the junior. Putting some speed on the base paths. His home run Whittles, or walk off Whittles. And a brief stop in the action here just to confirm the pinch runner, the umpires. One out, runner on second. 
Whittles one for two so far this afternoon. Gets a piece of this one up the first base side. That's a fair ball, gloved by the first baseman, and she'll step on the bag. Holly does, or Holly's pinch runner, Keith, does push up to third. Two away, however. Emma Murphy to the plate. That one is just outside. One and O oh on Murphy. That one high, two and O. Oh. The umpire signaled with his hand to the pitcher that that ball was out of the strike zone high. If Emma can be patient here and work the count in her favor, I like her chances to knock in a run. And there is a strike, two and one. It's been a very impressive season for all the Hillers spring teams. Every team that could make the postseason tournament did make the postseason tournament for Hopkinton, which is certainly a rarity. That one's fouled away, two and two. He's and just a little out front of that pitch, maybe a little bit too anxious with that runner just 60 feet away. And of course, for the latest and greatest in Hiller's playoff action, turn to our website, hcam.tv. That one's fouled away. Two and two remains the count. A good battle here between Emma Murphy and Sophia Sousa. Emma grounded out to the shortstop in the first inning and flew out to right field her last time up. Murphy squaring up and is ready for the pitch. Up the middle, slow roller, glove by the pitcher, throw to first, they got her. A saving play there by Sousa. Run would have scored if she didn't get the throw there in time. Dartmouth will come up on the top of the seventh, down to their final three outs on HCAM. Top of the seventh, eight, nine, and one for Dartmouth, and Medeiros with a leadoff bunt, and she's safe. A single, Holly picked it up, but didn't see a throw. And that is just what Dartmouth wanted here on this top of the seventh, as Sophia Sousa, the pitcher, will step in. You'll see how Hopkins defense aligns here just in case of another bunt. And there's the other bunt fouled away. Bennett moved over from shortstop to second just in case it was a throw down. Seven hits in this game for Dartmouth. No runs to show for it as of right now. There's, there's a bunt for strike two. Jillian Cedia popped up from her position thinking about back picking the runner but held, held the ball smartly. Fouled away. Count remains 0-2. One on, no outs. With the number nine hitter, the pitcher, would they try and bunt with two strikes? Yes, they There's do. There's a bunt, yep. Up the left side, throw to first is high, gets away. Madero's up to third, and she's gonna try to score. Oh, no. They throw to second. And the run will score. Maderos coming all the way from around first. Scores the first Dartmouth run of the game. And Sousa is up to second base. And that is going to be an error by Holly on the throw. Are you crediting Sousa with the single? I think she showed the speed and beat it out, and then the throw is just bad. They did send a pinch runner in for Sousa. I'm gonna score that E1. So there is a pinch runner in the game for Dartmouth. Stepping in is Rachel Pereira. One run is in for Dartmouth, and there's still a runner on second with no outs. 
You can hear the Dartmouth fans exhorting their team to put together a rally to at least tie the score. One and one. Holly deals just outside. Two and one. Pereira's already single today and was involved in that runner's interference call. Runner on second is Cassidy Pratt, pinch runner for Sophia Souza. There's a strike. And that is going to even up the count at two and two. Outside, and the battle continues on, full count. And this, Rachel Pereira having a good day at the plate. She's walked and has two base hits. And now she has one up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, and they got her. Now the throw to third, and they get the other runner too. Two away. Sousa was trying to take it all the way to third, and they thought that was the game. That's only two outs. They thought the game was over. Wishful thinking there. We'll score that 6-3-5. Uh, A twin killing I'll in an unusual way. <laughs> now they've taken everybody off the bases, and Heather Hawley will work with a clean slate with one out remaining. Kaylee Kamire, the shortstop, up to the plate. There's a strike. Down to the last two strikes, Tom. That was pretty funny. All the players thought the game was over. That one is strike two. And it, Emma Murphy kind of stayed on the field and looked confused. And I was confused. Good thing there wasn't a runner on base. They could have walked home. <laughs> that one outside, one and two. That is true. That is very true. I think Heather Holly uh, is breathing a sigh of relief. She's got empty bags. Strike and three. And there's strike three. The Hellers have done it. They get the two nothing victory, two to one victory over Dartmouth. A scary situation in the top of the seventh where you had a runner on with no outs, but the 6-3-5 double play took care of that, and then a game-ending strikeout to wrap things up in round number one for the Hillers. What a game we saw here this afternoon, a good performance. As they get the two to one victory, we'll take a quick timeout, come back and wrap this game up. It's Hillers softball on HCAM. Saturday, June 3rd, the Hopkinton Hillers, who finished the regular season 18-2, played their first postseason game of the year. The third-seeded Hillers hosted 14-seeded 14-7 Dartmouth. Bottom of the first, the Hillers' bats got going. As this is hit in the air over to center field to the fence, and that is off the fence. That is going to be a base hit for Holly, a stand-up double. She crushed that ball. That was nearly gone. The winner of this game will advance to take on the winner of Braintree and their opponent. They'll either play Somerset and Attleboro. That game's going on right now. This is up the middle, slow roller, throw to first. It is going to be not in time. Everybody's safe. Molly Bennett showing off the wheels, beats it out. Katie Holly pushes up to third. Hit in the air, over the head of the second baseman. That'll drop one run in, and a second run is in. Two nothing, Hillers, a two RBI single for Lindsey Whittles. No more runs would score until the top of the seventh when Dartmouth gave the Hillers a scare. One on, no outs. With the number nine hitter, the pitcher, 
would they try and bunt with two strikes? Yes, they There's do. There's a bunt, yep. Up the left side, throw to first is high, gets away. Madero's up to third, and she's gonna try to score. They throw to second, and the run will score. Madero's coming all the way from around first. Scores the first Dartmouth run of the game, and Sousa is up to second base. Rachel Pereira at the plate, a run already in for the Dartmouth Indians, and a runner on base with no outs. Outside, the battle continues on, full count. Rachel Pereira having a good day at the plate. She's walked and has two base hits. And now she has one up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, and they got her. Now the throw to third, and they'll get the other runner too. Two away. Sousa was trying to take it all the way to third, and they thought that was the game. That's only two outs. They thought the game was over. The wild play ends up being a 6-3-5 double play and then a bit of confusion as the Hillers defense starts walking off the field, perhaps thinking they got the triple play, but they still actually had one more out to get. And there's strike three, the Hillers have done it. Heather Holly took care of business and struck out Haley Kemeyer for out number three as the Hillers advance and take the two to one victory Lindsay Whittles had both of the Hillers' RBIs with her first inning single. I caught up with pitcher Heather Hawley after the game. All right, I'm here with uh, Heather Hawley. Heather, a great game out there to start the playoffs off, and uh, a game that we saw a lot of weird stuff happen as well. And uh, you, you had another great performance in the pitcher's circle. Uh, can you talk about this game this afternoon? It was a wild one. Um, it was definitely very strange. I mean, we kept our composure really well. Um, we just had to get, we knew we had to get through this game to keep going. And all of us, we just like really have a lot of passion. And that showed on the field today. Now in the seventh inning, I'm sure it was a little bit uh, nerve wracking. What was going through your head uh, when they scored a run, they still had a runner on with no outs? Um, I was a little nervous, but I know that even if they did score another one, we as a team would battle through and hopefully pull it out. But I really have the utmost faith in the field, and everyone contributes. And I wasn't too, I was a little shaken, but I knew that we'd be able to pull through. Well, you did a great job as usual. And uh, this team, they seem to have a strong connection. Uh, you girls have been playing together uh, for quite a while now. What's it been like playing with this group? It's been a lot of fun. This is probably definitely my favorite team thus far. We all really love the game, and we're all happy to be there. Um, and everyone has a role, which is really nice. Like all, the, even the people who don't play that much, they all like cheer, cheer us on, and they're like happy to be there. All right. Well, another great game by you, and we're looking forward to hopefully many more playoff games to come. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you, Coach. A uh, nice win out there against Dartmouth, and what was a really wild game, I think. Uh, can you talk about this game this afternoon? We took the jumped the early, on the early lead. They didn't make a mistake the whole game. We felt we like we needed more, and then we hiccuped at the end, and then. Molly made a great play by holding the runner on, throwing to first, and Lindsay, who had to take over from Maddie, who had a little bit of an injury. Lindsay hasn't played first all year long, came up and threw a P to third, and Emma was smart enough to keep the tag on. It was a little bit of a wild play, but we got a double play out of that, so it was tremendous. And I think uh, Lindsay Wills did pretty good at uh, first base. Uh, could you talk about her performance today? Uh, new position, but I think she uh, covered it pretty nicely. Lindsay's a tremendous de defensive player, big leader on our team, obviously had the big hit. Struggled a little bit first half of the year offensively, but she's always played great defense, plays great defense on left, and she's, she's improved tremendously defensively. And I had to make a switch, and I just thought, you know, left-handed first baseman with good skill. She made a couple really tough catches on balls from Molly, who throws, you know, throws really hard across the diamond. Thought she did a really nice job. She did a nice job on one of the bunts. And then the last thing, they, they lay down a great bunt, and then they got a, a tough one that I don't know if we could have gotten or not. And then, but we don't panic. And we play with a lot of grit. I mean, the girls don't get down. And, I, and, and that's something I love about this team. They don't, you've been to a bunch of games, they don't ever get down. Right. And, and you know, so it was two to one with nobody out. With, they have a great base runner, and she makes a great play, and here we are, we get to play again. Now the uh, top of the seventh, the wild double play, and then everyone runs off the field like the game is over. 
it actually confused me for for a second. Um, but that that was a, a pretty funny situation there, I think. Yes, uh, you don't really want your team to run off the field with two outs. And then I got to be honest, at the end, I thought it was a one and two count. And when she struck her out, and they started around like, no, no, no. But they're just excited. Uh, right. th that's these girls are a great group of girls for being around. They play hard. They're fun. Uh, they're respectful. They play the game the right way. You know, and every, every girl, every girl has contributed. Girls are always cheering on the bench. It's just a great atmosphere. I, I love coaching these girls. All right, Coach. Well, uh, we hope that there is many more playoff games to come. Congratulations on a great win today against the tough Dartmouth team. Thank you very much, Tom. Appreciate it. The Hillers advance in the postseason. They will have another home game next round as they take down Dartmouth by a final score of 2-1. to one. The Hillers score two runs on six hits, commit one error, or excuse me, two errors, while Dartmouth scores one run on eight hits and commits no errors. Both Hillers' runs came in the bottom of the first. Katie Holly hit a one-out double, followed by a Molly Bennett single. Heather Holly then struck out, but Lindsay Whittles took care of business with two outs as she hit a two RBI single to score both Holly and Bennett. And that was the only runs of the game until the top of the seventh. A scary uh, half inning for the Hillers fans as it looked like Dartmouth had something going. Ariana Madero started the inning off with a single. Sophia Sousa singled to follow that up. And then Rachel Pereira grounded out into what ended up being a 6-3-5 double play. The shortstop threw over to first for one. And then the runner at second, which was Cassidy Pratt, took off for third base. They throw over to third base. Pratt slides to third, ends up not reaching the base, and they tag her out for the second out of the inning. And then Haley Kamire strikes out to wrap it up and give the Hillers the victory. Dartmouth will end their season with 13 wins and nine losses, while the 19 and two third seeded Hopkinton Hillers will advance to play an opponent to be determined and a game that is happening right now. For Bob Hamilton on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching this presentation of Hopkinton Hillers softball on HCAM. The final score for the final time, the Hopkinton Hillers take down the Dartmouth Indians. Two to one is the final score. They advance on in the postseason. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon.